All right, everybody, hello and welcome. As always, I am Sean. This is In The Mix, episode number seven of our St. Pauli series. If you haven't gone and watched last week's episodes where we finished off our first season in the two Bundesliga, go and check those ones out. It'll bring you the run home. It'll get you up to date with the squad. Whole bunch of great stuff, which, of course, we're going to go through a little bit again today because we start season two. There's some new signings that have come in. We've done some slight tactical tweaks to some of the player roles that we're looking at. This is a whole season preview, off-season results, all that sort of fantastic stuff. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to bring you, so we're not going to waste too much time we're going to jump straight in and see how we've gotten on so first and foremost as you guys can see our next match is actually today in game we are going to start our bundesliga 2 season we've got a whole bunch that we need to get through before that though so the first thing i think we're going to go through is our tactical tweaks there are some new faces here we'll talk about them further in a moment but we're slightly going to change the way that we were doing things from last season we were using a ram deter role in the run home and luca dash did quite well in it but i want to try and get these inverted wingers working if it doesn't work we've at least got the ability the flexibility to go and try and bring that back in it is still giving us this gap here with minor issues so i'm not 100 sure how that's going to work but we have made an adjustment in midfield as well we're going with the halfback sandry of course still on loan with us from last season we spoke about in friday's episode trying to keep those loan players for this season and hopefully trying to sign them permanently more on that in a little bit but then we're going to go with a box-to-box -box and an advanced playmaker on attack as the two. I'm hoping that this advanced playmaker will kind of solve some of that issue by looking to get forward and get into that space. So that in possession, we almost become kind of like the halfback dropping in with the two ball playing defenders, the wingers pushing back on. We almost kind of become like a 3-4-3 in possession effectively once everybody moves up into their attacking structures. We will see how that goes. This positive mentality we can go with a little bit more this season. We've, of course, got our cautious mentality, which is a little bit more possession base when we want to try and keep the ball and then we've got our gung-ho mentality our attacking structure which is when we really need to go after a goal and the additional thing that i'm going to add in here is we're going to go shoot on site and set a work ball in the box that's going to be the big change for our attacking structures in this upcoming season this is where we're going to roll the dice if there's like 10 minutes to go and we're a goal down or it's nil all and we really want to push to try and get three points this is the one that we're going to pull out of the hat Last season, we were trying to go attacking from the off. It didn't quite work out. We're still working out the match engine. There's, of course, I think been over this past weekend, a couple of patches as well. So it could be a very different tactic this season that we see working for the St. Pauli side. But we've at least got a couple of different variations. We are constantly going to be checking out our analysis tab throughout the course of the year, seeing what we're doing well, seeing what we're not doing well, looking at who's in form, looking at who's doing well in their player roles, and then continuing to work through and develop that way. We will eventually figure something out that's going to work consistently in this match engine, and we'll stick to that philosophy. But we are still very much in season two figuring that out as we go up our leagues. We might as well start with it because I think it's the part that you guys are always the most excited about, our transfers so far. Far. If we have a look at our transfer history, we've had a few different players go out, some of them for fees, some of them for you know less than what we paid for them, but we'll talk about that further in a moment. First one, Florian Carstens, who didn't actually play for us last season. He was out on loan uh, with V Spaden in the three Liga, 22-year-old German central defender. I thought about keeping him. I was actually moving on other players to try and give Florian Carstens a chance in our lineup as like a fourth choice center back. Because if you're not aware, we've got registration rules relating to players under the age of 23. We've got registration rules relating to German players being in our squad. He was someone that I thought once he came back from his loan could do a serviceable job as a backup defender. Definitely not a starter. But then randomly, Udinese came in and offered a million euro for him, which is over his value. I thought, this is perfect. We'll take it. We get a good profit on it. I wasn't expecting to make that transfer and have him go out, but fantastic to get some cash for him and, you know, kind of reinvigorate our transfer budget a little bit more on that in a moment was get to that left hand side uh kepa uriata has left he had one season with us we signed him from atletico bilbao he just didn't quite get to the level we needed him to do borussia monch and gladback were interested a couple of other sides were interested as well he goes out for 800k not bad business bringing him in we did, I think, take a little bit of a hit on the fee, though. 1.5 million is what we paid to bring him across. Less than 12 months later, he goes out for 700k. More on that, though, in a moment, because there are players coming in. I just didn't think he was going to play. I didn't think a loan would do that well for him, because realistically, even if he comes back, we've got players that are more ready for first-team football. More on them in a moment. Parky Jung never really played for us. He heads out. Simon Mackianok. He heads out. Those are really the last players from the original squad. Ersan Zahi didn't see anything of. Patrick Finger played a couple of games, signed him on a free transfer last season. That's kind of that fourth choice central midfielder when we were playing with Nazales. He moves on to Armenia Bellafeld for 20K, which is a good profit for us. Arison Akame has gone to 1860 Munich on a free transfer. And Aurel Lubongu Mbongu, who did play a couple of times last season for us as a backup winger, he moves on just basically because his potential ability, not that high. He's turned 20. I don't really expect him to be getting to be a player that we could take up into the Bundesliga with us, which is what we're kind of starting to work towards. 
But all in all, 2.1 million euro, sorry, I nearly said pounds, 2.1 million euro raised, fantastic. Wasn't expecting to get that, but we will take that cash because I've spent 12 million. Now in all of these transfers, we've got bits of cash that we're paying up front and then stuff that we're paying over the next three years. So really, we're really, I think maybe next season and potentially the season after, got to reel in our spending and not immediately start splashing cash because we have got future fees tied into a lot of these deals. The first one, on loan with us last season and now joining permanently Ezekiel Zebelos from Boca Juniors. He joins as our most expensive transfer, 6 million euro. He has broken the club transfer record, but he was fantastic for us in the run home as that inverted winger on the left-hand side. Did really, really well, helping us like really propel up the table. He jumps in, three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential, still only 19 years of age. No youth caps or full caps or anything for the Argentine national side, but you can see here 15 dribbling, 15 finishing, 15 first touch, 15 technique, 15 flair, 15 agility, 15 pace. He's got a lot of really good attributes that I think with another season of first-team football, he's really going to move up to like 16, 17, become a real proper force in this game. And I'm not exactly worried about the fee because I think we can get quite a bit for him. He's got a minimum fee release clause of 12 million euro and if he has a good season, I could definitely see teams coming in and bidding that amount for him to try and get him across. The change is he's probably not going to start because we've also signed Jacob Kaminski. Polish left winger and right winger can play on both sides in a variety of roles. Four-star winger on the right-hand side if things don't work out here on the left or if we want to get Zebulos some more game time. Uh, and he can play as an inverted winger on the left and a right-footed player as well, which is why I want to try and get him out there. Four-star current ability, five-star potential. So he's that star and a half ahead of Zebulos at the moment, which is why I think he will likely start. Now, notable stuff for him, career milestones already. He did win last season the uh, Polish League as part of his club. He was shortlisted for the play of the season at 18 years of age. He was named in the team of the week a bunch of different times. He won the Young Player of the Season, which is fantastic. He was in the best 11 for that season. He was the Supporters Player of the Year in a title-winning side. Absolutely phenomenal stuff for him. We've got him for a steal at 5 million euro, I think. And for a player of four-star current ability, absolutely fantastic. And he's Polish, so I think he's going to settle really well in Germany. He's going to be close to that area. I don't think he'd be looking to move to any of the other teams in and around the division. He does also have a minimum fee release clause of 9 million euros. So if a Bundesliga club comes in, they could steal him away, but that would still see us profit a few million. So... Low risk for this one. He's earning quite a bit, 10,000 euro a week. One of our highest contracted players. Got a few bonuses and stuff in there as well. But thrilled to get Jacob Kaminsky in. I think he's going to be fantastic. And a player that I don't think I've seen anyone else's saves. If you've seen him in someone else's saves across YouTube, let me know because I'd love to see how he actually pans out. And then the other one, which you guys know about because you knew about it because we signed him a year ago. Renier finally makes his way across from Santos. If in doubt and need to find Wonder Kids, go to Santos because they've got a whole bunch. They are expensive. You've got to pay. But thankfully, we managed to work a good deal for him. 1 million euro, absolute steal, I think, for a guy who's going to be fantastic for us. No release clause or anything, which is huge. Left footed player playing on the right hand side, that natural balance that we're going to get is fantastic. He's developed quite a bit as well. I think when we initially scouted him, he was two and a half star current ability. He's gone up a full star last year, up to three and a half star current ability, still five star potential, still only 18 years of old, which is absolutely crazy. 16 dribbling, 14 crossing, finishing first touch, 15 passing, 14 technique, technically very, very good, mentally very, very good, 19 determination, 15 flair, good off the ball and vision, good physical traits as well, 14 acceleration, 15 natural fitness, 13 pace, 18 years of age, he's going to get better in all of these traits, he's going to develop a bit more physically, his mental attributes are going to continue to grow and develop and I'm thrilled to have him because I think if he's going to start on the right hand side, that's why we've moved back to that inverted winger style. If it's not working out and the inverted wingers aren't quite as strong as a role as they were last season, we've got that flexibility to change. He could be an inside forward. He could be an advanced playmaker. He's got a lot of the key traits for a lot of the things that we want him to be doing in that side. And I think he's going to be a fantastic signing for us as well. Giving him the number 10 shirt, playing on that right-hand side, fantastic to see. Very, very excited about that. In addition, and you do know this if you watch Friday's episode, we have renewed the loan deals for Luke and Nets, the left wing back that we signed on loan from Hertha. We cannot afford him. That's the challenge at the moment. When we put a bid in, they want crazy money. And by crazy money, I mean like 100 million euro type of money. I'm not sure why, because he's not at that level, but we're going to give him another 12 months, try and develop him a bit further. Really, I want to try and keep a German core to this side. I want to try and get at least, I think, three or four different starting players that are German in this lineup year to year. You can see we're very cosmopolitan. We've got Argentine players, Brazilian players, um, players from Scandinavia, players from throughout Europe. So really enjoying like the versatility and like the different nations. It's almost like a United Nations, so to speak, of different playing backgrounds across the division. 
and across the squad. But at the same time, we know we've got those registration rules that we've got to be wary of. So, like, Luca Nets, he'll be perfect if we can eventually get him in. If we go up into the Bundesliga and get a big influx of cash and it covers our existing financial structure, of which we have a decent balance so far, but I would expect us by the end of the season to be back down towards a pretty low balance, then, yeah, he's someone that we'll definitely try and go in for and try and make, like, our long-term left-back option. Same with Sandri. I would love to try and bring Sandri in. I think he's absolutely fantastic. Also from Santos, was, again, excellent for us in the back end of last season, 14 appearances after joining in January. Still working him as a halfback uh, as that number six, really doing the defensive work for our midfield three. I, again, I want to bring him across, but we just don't have the cash at the moment. When we place a bid, they want like 10 to 15 million euro, and we're not there yet. Maybe when we've got Bundesliga cash, we can bring him across, and he'll be a huge player for us. But we've renewed the loan, potentially. If we can, we will renew it again next season to try and keep him around the squad. You can see as far as current ability is concerned, he's right up there in that top group. Kaminsky comes in as the highest current ability player. Bella Kochap's there as well. Finn Becker's there as well. He's had a couple of different teams sniffing around. No bids as yet. We'll see what happens as that plays out. Sandri, Arezo, Williamson, all players that are improving quite a bit and ready for first team football. So great to get them out on the park. As far as potential is concerned, Kaminsky also at the top of the list. Bella Kochap's there. Luca Nets, Becker. So those German players that we've got on the books at the moment they are all very high potential so players that we could build around for the next few seasons which would be fantastic to see otherwise though we're in a very strong position two players for every position that's exactly what we want to try and drive that depth have that versatility have different players coming in and pushing each other for starting positions our preseason results have been pretty good. Uh, mostly wins, just one defeat last time out to Porto, but we beat 1860 Munich, Magdeburg, Rostock in our Hamburg training camp. Not sure why we had a Hamburg training camp. We could have just stayed at home. It would have been much easier. We beat uh, Drew with Shivas, Guadalajara, and Boca Juniors. We beat River Plate and Benfica during that period. Some fantastic performances throughout those games as well. Uh, and then Porto, just too strong in the end. Uh, a 2-1 defeat to them. Evan Nielsen getting a double. Gibor pulling one back in the 92nd minute for us. But all those fixtures at home as well, which is going to give us some additional cash heading into the season because we got good tickets and we got good gates, even though they were pre-season friendlies. And we start the season with games against Osnabrück, who we played last season, Versberger Kickers, Darmstadt, Heidenheim, Wiesbaden. It's a good little run to start off the year. We've got a couple of promoted sides in there. And I think it gives us a chance to try and get up towards the top of the division before we go into a really tough run of fixtures in October where we've got Hamburger, Werder Bremen, Dusseldorf, Union Berlin, sides that have dropped down from the Bundesliga, sides that probably underperformed last year in Hamburger and Dusseldorf as far as this league is concerned. Speaking of this league, season preview, we are expected to do much better. You remember this time last year, we were expected to finish at the bottom of the division just based on the players that we've brought in. But the young players that we've given an opportunity to grow and develop and get better have done really well. And we're now expected to finish in the top five spots. I want to go one higher than that. I want to try and get at least into those top three positions and get ourselves that playoff for promotion. I think that's where we should be. And I think that's key to the development of our players is getting them up to the Bundesliga so they're playing against high quality opposition. We're not going to see all these five-star potential players hit that level if they're not playing at the elite, elite tier. As far as the media, Dream 11 as well is concerned. Bella Kotchap's in there, Renier's in there, even though he hasn't played a game yet in this division. Fantastic to see us making some ground and some inroads there. Both of those players will be amongst the first names on the team sheet and key for us this season if we're going to do well. Team's expected to do the best. Werder Bremen, ten odds to go straight back up into the Bundesliga after getting relegated last year. Union Berlin, the other side, coming down. No third team because the playoff was actually won by the Bundesliga side, so they don't come up. Promoted are Dinamo Dresden, 1860 Munich, and Wiesbaden, who, of course, Florian Carstens played out last season. So three pretty strong teams coming into the division. Teams with good history, teams with good depth that you'd expect to be in and around this level. They expect Hamburger to do well again. They expect Nuremberg to do well again. They expect Dusseldorf to do well and Paderborn. Teams that have been in and around the Bundesliga over the last few seasons or the last 10 years at least. Interesting manager movement. So Dusseldorf have a new coach. It'll be interesting to see if that gets their kind of act together. They were poor last season. He joins from Stuttgart. Uh, Torsten Frings, uh, who had a great playing career at Werder Bremen, is now taking over as their manager. And they've got three players in the media, Dream 11 as well. Sorry, four players, because the goalkeeper's theirs as well. So I'd expect them to be strong. I'd expect them to do well. But if we get off to a good start, I can see us keeping pace with a lot of the better teams in the division. Maybe not in this game, but in real life, winning's a mentality. If you come down as a relegated side, you haven't won for that many football games. So hopefully, uh, us as a team that finished last season really well, we can continue that form, continue moving up the division and do our best. But we've covered off a tremendous amount of stuff. There's a whole bunch of different things we can go into further detail in. If there's stuff that you want to see or know more about, let me know down in the comment section below. We're just going to play the one game because we have covered off quite a bit tactically, transfer-wise, all that sort of stuff. We're just going to play this Osnabrück game. So let's get stuck straight into it. You can see... 
no one's played any matches so far at this point of the year. It is the perfect time, I think, to really start going after it a little bit. We're going to go positive from the off, even though we're away from home. There's the potential maybe we'll go, if that's not working, back to our possession-based style and a cautious mentality just to keep the ball a little bit, get our foot on it, and then work our way back into the game. We've got a couple of knocks. Armini isn't fully fit. He will miss this one. We're going to have Norman Williamson come back in. Not still 100% confident as a ball-playing defender, but he is getting better. You can see no-nonsense centre-back, central defender. He's getting back to familiarity with those roles. He's already up to three-and-a-half star current ability. Fantastic to see him continuing to develop and at 18 years of age. There's no reason he couldn't crack his way into the starting lineup. Bella Kochat will play alongside him, first name on the team sheet each week. Nets is the left wing back, Gundeland is the right wing back, Sandri Lanka midfield with Becker and Yabua ahead of him. Uh, we have got, there is one more face, we'll probably talk about him more as he actually arrives, which is on the 29th of August, which should just get inside the window, but isn't quite here yet. Omer Bayaz, we haven't spoken about him, but one of the reasons that we're also making that adjustment to playing with an advanced playmaker is the fact that he's coming across, and that's going to be his preferred role. Gibul was fantastic for us. I think Bayaz is on another level entirely again, and obviously was a fantastic player for FM20. Hopefully, he can be half as good this year. Was a star for FM Trek's uh, Fenerbahce side. Hopefully, he will be again for us here in Germany. And front three of Renier on the right, Kaminsky on the left, and Arezo leading the lineup top. Three and a half stars for Renier and Arezo, who's going to, I think, continue developing and being a fantastic striker. He was great for us in the last 10 games after taking a little bit of time to settle, and Kaminsky immediately comes in as being probably the most talented player in the squad. So very excited about this season, very thrilled with the way that we've gone through about our business in the offseason, haven't done too much, raised some cash. We've now really got to make sure that we're getting the most out of this team and find the tactic that suits them best because we can't spend... 12 million euro every off season. That's not going to be sustainable for us. But what we can do is try and get this group consistent football together and get the most out of them. Everyone seems pretty happy. There's a couple of players that are concerned with tactical familiarity. Zebulos is one, but he's not starting. Aremu, Vikov, Bamba, they are not starting. They're off the bench. So that's absolutely fine. The starting 11 should be good to go. The last two friendlies we played against Benfica and Porto, we had pretty much this starting 11 available and playing. Finn Becker, of course, captain for this season. Be interesting to see before the window close if anything comes in for him. I'm going to pump fists. I'm going to say, show me what you can do. And Losas looks focused, which is good. Carbonell off the bench looks motivated. No reason he couldn't start in this side. Osnabrück, you can see here, playing a 4-2-3-1, very similar to FM20, where every big club played a 4-2-3-1. But we should have enough to deal with them. It matches up well with our 4-3-3, I think. And we've got debuts for Kaminsky and Renier on the wings. If they can get off to a scoring start, absolutely fantastic for us. We'll keep an eye on other fixtures as they continue as well. I want to see how Union Berlin and Werder Bremen start the season. But really, early part of the season, nothing but hope, nothing but... Uh, unfulfilled expectations, I guess is a good way to put it. And then again, jumping back into the TCS skin, I'm loving how this display looks as far as the match day experience is concerned. It is so much better than the uh, regular everyday FM vanilla version. I would highly recommend you following the link in the description below to go and check this one out. First highlight of the match, it does start with Osnabrück on the right-hand side for them. Henning across the class in midfield, back to Henning again. They've got an overlap here on the right-hand side if they can find it, but instead they're staying central. Good tackle there, but it's one back, and it's a decent strike from the edge of the area from uh, Manido just beyond the far post. Losas was scrambling, but thankfully out for the goal kick. So first highlight's gone their way. Statistically, though, so far, we are on top. We're going to use a shout. We're going to use demand more. Again, if you've got suggestions for shouts to use, throw them in the comment section below. I do listen to all the comments. I do respond to as many of them as possible. And no highlights to speak of from us just yet. So if we get to halftime without a highlight, that means we've got to make some sort of tactical tweak. XG, we are well and truly ahead of, even though we haven't seen any highlights. 0.78 to 0.09. But the one highlight that Osnabrück had didn't go far wide. So there could be a chance that we are not playing our best football. We're going to immediately jump into tactics and subs before we do the team talk. Let's go do our possession-based structure. Let's go a little bit more cautious, play a little bit deeper, keep the ball a little bit more, and see if we can't get our feet on it and take control of this game. Dressing room, we're going to say, we'll go pump fist again and give the fans something to cheer. Finn Becker seems demotivated. Kaminsky seems demotivated. So let's try and pick up our midfield. I'm just going to say there's a lot more to come from you. And Renier and Gibbo seem motivated. Sandry seems nervous. Let's try and talk to some individuals. No, I can't even do that because I've done the defenders one. A lot more to come from the defenders. Let's do the same thing for the attackers. Arezo hasn't really responded, but at least we've got some players back to motivated. If we go through this match after this offseason, me gushing about how proud I am of it then and don't have a highlight, 
I'll be very upset. But Gundalan's got the ball here. Wide right, Aokibu, a back stick ball towards Kaminsky. Could have opened his account. I think it was brought back for the goal kick. Had it just over the crossbar. Keep was right there, though. Would have been interesting had it been on target. And as we always do, we'll give it to the hour mark before we look at subs and changes. But we're going to hit pause now. With 30 minutes to go, is it the time to pull the trigger on our attacking instruction? We might go with that. A little bit higher intensity. You shouldn't really ever, I think, use three different tactics and three different styles throughout the course of a match. But I want to try and get off to a good start this season. Gundalan's not played particularly well, so Beekoff will come on. Arezo's not played particularly well either. So we're going to give Carbonell an opportunity. And we'll hold off on that last sub for the last few minutes. I'm going to... Praise them on oh, no, a pump fist and say, I have faith in you. And Carbonell looks focused, but again, I've not seen a single substitute team talk or substitute rev up work at any point in FM21. If there's something I'm doing wrong, let me know in the comments. Deep ball here from Kirk and it's headed back forwards, clipped the post and they've slide at home. They've had one shot on target, I think, this game. And as soon as we made that attacking adjustment, they have scored from a set piece. And we're going to check this one out in three dimensions. Deep ball in here from Kirk. I think Gabur loses his marker. Spreckelmeyer, phenomenal name, hits the crossbar, also hits the upright, and then Henning, the first one to it, to pass into the back of the empty net. We have got an immediate highlight here from kickoff. Gabur with the ball. Now to Vikoff, across to Becker. Can we work the switch out to the other side? No, we don't. Go back to Gabur. He's got a man outside here in Renier. He's going to want to get it back on his left foot. Gabua hangs the ball in towards Carbonell, who immediately nods home. All right, so we've pulled them straight back, literally from kickoff. They haven't touched possession since putting the ball in the back of the net. And that was excellent, excellent play there from Gabua as well in that advanced playmaker role that we're using again. Ranier maybe needs to try and take a man on there, but Gabua, great ball in. Carbonell, he's in form. He scored a couple for the uh, under-19 Spanish side as well in the off-season. Maybe he needs to be pushing for more starting football as we get into this season. We do need to push on a little bit though. So I'm going to hit pause. We're going to use a shout. Encourage has been, people have suggested that one. So I'm going to use that now. And then we're going to give it 10 minutes. We've got one more sub up our sleeve to potentially make to try and get ourselves to three points. Statistically, we're on top in pretty much every category except the score sheet. We need to try and get another goal. Kaminsky's got a bit of a knock, but we're going to take him off. We're going to bring on Zebelos, who was fantastic for us last season. We're going to say hands on hips, no pump fists. I have faith in you. Again, no response. I just cannot get response out of subs this year. And we're going to use one more shout. Let's go encourage. Let's give it a whirl. Come on, boys. Let's try and find something. There's a highlight here starting from the goal kick. Ball forward finds Vikoff. Fresh sub on the right-hand side. And he goes for the strike from distance instead of trying to get a crossing. Carbonell was breaking into a great spot at the edge of the six-yard box. Corner here. Zeb lost to take. Renier was there. It's cleared away. Williamson could put it back in. Goes to Gibua, wide right area, similar area to where he got his assist. Cut back for Renier. Cut back to Sandry, edge of the area. What a strike. That is absolute blast, that one in from the edge of the 18-yard box. A wonderful, wonderful goal for Sandry. He's off the mark as well for us, so that's his first goal for the club. And it could be huge for us. He could have just won us three points to start season two, which would be absolutely fantastic. Cut back here from Renier is good. Doesn't rush it. Sandry just leathers that one right foot. He keeps going to do nothing about it. I think it might have even hit the roof of the net, the way it was rising into that top corner. And that is absolutely fantastic. Five minutes of additional time that we just have to try and get through here. I would love for FM to bring back that final highlight with the final whistle, but they haven't. But a 2-1 victory. We made tough work of it, let's not lie. That was more difficult than it should have been. But Sandri gets an 8.0. He'll be the man of the match. Becker, Gabua both had great games. Gabua, fantastic assist. Carbonell off the bench, starting his scoring for the season. A couple of players that didn't play well. Defense didn't do quite well. Losas didn't do as well. Arezo struggled. Kaminsky struggled. Gundelan struggled. But again, we've got that depth now where we can bring players on and they're not that much different to the players that started. I'm going to say a good win, boys. Well done. No need to overcomplicate it. Everyone seems inspired and motivated. That is absolutely perfect for us. And we're on a scoring streak. Got a little achievement that's bobbed up there which is that we've scored in 10 competitive matches, which is absolutely fantastic to see. In other results, Werder Bremen have destroyed Nuremberg 4-0. Nuremberg expected to do well in the division as far as the media prediction is concerned. So Werder Bremen might be a bit of a boss team that we have to keep an eye on throughout the course of the season. Hamburger with a big win as well against Dresden, newly promoted side. Union Berlin, the other relegated team from the Bundesliga, only managing a 2-2 draw with Sandhausen. But it puts us in sixth spot. Good start. That's what we need. Do need to boost our goal difference. Do need to be a bit more clinical in terms of the chance we create. But I would have taken three points if he offered it before the start of the season. Sandra, as we expected, gets the Man of the Match award. Fantastic for him. We've got a loan signing that looks like it's going to get be confirmed. Jamie Lawrence here defensive, oh sorry, central defender from Bayern Munich. We're going to try and bring him in, I think, to round out the squad so that we've got two players in each position, but I wouldn't expect him to play all that much. But we are going to give Sandri a little bit of praise here. We're going to put our arm around him and say, I just want to say he was good. Do I have to say exactly what he did? 
Number and quality of chances. Okay, he's happy with that, which is good. I didn't want to say goals because I don't want to, he doesn't shoot that much. So I don't know if we really want to be praising that uh, aspect of it. But fantastic for him. We will try and raise some cash and try and get another bid in for him. Finance, you can see, not doing horrifically, but it's the start of the season. Last season, that was our highest point, And then it gradually went down over time. Same again this year. It's at its highest point. I expect it to go down over time. And haven't got much left in the transfer budget either. So it's unlikely that we'll go in for any further players in this window, which takes us to our upcoming schedule. Transfer window closes at the end of August. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is jump forward a little bit. What I want to try and bring you guys is this game against Hamburg SV. Of course, Hamburg Derby. Want to try and get those in as much as possible. And then we've got Werder Bremen at home. They have started the season very strongly. It remains to be seen if that will continue over the first few games of the season. But I think those are the games that we want to try and bring you guys this week. Puts us in a good spot. We'll be about 10 games further ahead in the season. We'll be able to see where we sit in the table and how we're traveling so far. And hopefully, it's really good news. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is the part that I appreciate the most. If you want to support this channel, if you want to help celebrate the start of season two, you can drop a like on this video. You can also subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date on future videos as they continue to release throughout the holiday period. We'll continue the series probably up until February-ish, and then we'll make the adjustment across to our Pentagon Challenge, which I'm also incredibly excited about. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching. That's the part that means most to me. As always, I've been Sean, and I'll see you all again in the mixer.